But a good son should put up with a little paternal repetitiousness. Well, she tells me her boy and Arter see a lot of each other, etc. Is that true? Not really, said Van. They meet now and then at the usual parties, both like horses and races, but that's all. There is no etc. That's out of the question. Good. Ah, the portentous footfall is approaching, I hear. Prascovi de Pre has the worst fault of a snob, overstatement. Bonsoir, Boutelon. You look as ruddy as your native vine. But we are not getting any younger, as the Amerlocks say, and that pretty messenger of mine must have been waylaid by some younger and more fortunate suitor. Proshu Popochka, please, Dad, murmured Van, who always feared that his father's recondite jests might offend a menial, while sinning himself by being sometimes too curt. But, to use a hoary narrational turn, the old Frenchman knew his former master too well to be bothered by gentlemanly humor. His hand still tingled nicely from slapping Blanche's compact young bottom for having garbled Mr. Bean's simple request and broken a flower vase. After placing his tray on a low table, he retreated a few steps, his fingers remaining curved in the tray-carrying position, and only then acknowledged Demon's welcome with a fond bow. Was Monsieur's health always good? Indeed it was. I'll want, said Demon, a bottle of your Chateau La Tour d'Estoc for dinner, and when the butler, having removed en passant a crumpled little handkerchief from the piano top, had left the room with another salute, how do you get along with Ardor? She's, what, almost sixteen now, very musical and romantic? We are close friends, said Van, who had carefully prepared his answer to a question he had expected to come in one form or another. We have really more things in common than, for instance, ordinary lovers or cousins or siblings. I mean, we are really inseparable. We read a lot. She is spectacularly self-educated, thanks to her granddad's library. She knows the names of all the flowers and finches in the neighborhood. She is altogether a very amusing girl. Van began Demon, but stopped, as he had begun and stopped a number of times before in the course of the last years. Some day it would have to be said, but this was not the right moment. He inserted his monocle and examined the bottles. By the way, son, do you crave any of these aperitifs? My father allowed me Lilitovka and that Illinois brat, awful bilge, and Chernausvati, as Mariana would say. I suspect your uncle has a cachet behind the cylinders in his study and keeps there a finer whiskey than this Usk ad Ruskum. Well, let us have the cognac as planned, unless you are a Phileas Aque. No pun intended, but one gets carried away in goofs. Oh, I prefer claret. I'll concentrate, now Yagu, on the Latour later on. No, I'm certainly no teetotaler. And besides, the artist tap water is not recommended. I must warn Marina, said Demon, after a gum rinse and a slow swallow, that her husband should stop swilling tittery and stick to French and Calafrench wines after that little stroke he had. I met him in town recently, near Mad Avenue. Saw him walking toward me quite normally. But then as he caught sight of me a block of way, the clockwork began slowing down and he stopped, oh, helplessly, before he reached me. That's hardly normal. Okay, let our sweethearts never meet. As we used to say up at Chos. Only Yukonians think cognac is bad for the liver because they have nothing but vodka. Well, I'm glad you get along so well with ardor. That's fine. A moment ago in that gallery, I ran into a remarkably pretty soubrette. She never once raised her lashes and answered in French when I, please, my boy, move that screen a little. That's right. The stab of a sunset, especially from under a thunderhead, is not from my poor eyes. Or poor ventricles. Do you like the type, Van? The bowed little head, the bare neck, the high heels, the trot, the wiggle. You do, don't you? Well, sir, tell him I'm the youngest Venusian. Does he belong to? Show the, show the sign. Better not. Invent. Well, I'm resting after my torrid affair in London with my tango partner, whom you saw me dance with when you flew over for that last show. Remember? Indeed I do. Curious you calling it that. I think, sir, you've had enough brandy? Sure, sure, said Demon, wrestling with a subtle question which only the ineptitude of a kindred conjecture had crowded out of Marina's mind. Granted, it could have entered by some back door, for ineptitude is always synonymous with multitude, and nothing is fuller than an empty mind.
Naturally, continued Demon, there is a good deal to be said for a restful summer in the country. Open air life and all that, said Van. It is incredible that a young boy should control his father's liquor intake, remarked Demon, pouring himself a, self a fourth shallow. On the other hand, he went on nursing the thin-stemmed, gold-rimmed cup. Open air life may be pretty bleak without a summer romance. And not many decent girls haunt the neighborhood, I agree. There was that lovely Erminen girl, un petit juve très aristocratique, but I understand she's engaged. By the way, the Dupre woman tells me her son has enlisted and will soon be taking part in that deplorable business abroad which our country should have ignored. I wonder if he leaves any rivals behind. Goodness no, replied Honest Van. Ardor is a serious young lady. She has no beau, except me, Sava Sainz Durs. Now who, 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 Dad? Who said for Sans Dyer? Oh, King Wing, when I wanted to know how he liked his French wife. Well, that's fine news about Ardor. She likes horses, you say? She likes, said Van, what all our bells like. Balls, orchids, and the cherry orchard. Here Ardor herself came running into the room. Yes, 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 here I come, beaming. Old demon, iridescent wings humped, half rose, but sank back again, enveloping ardor with one arm, holding his glass in the other hand, kissing the girl in the neck and the hair, burrowing in her sweetness with more than an uncle's fervor. Gosh, she exclaimed with an outbreak of nursery slang that affected Van with even more. Umalini, autendressement, melting ravishment than his father seemed to experience. How lovely to see you clawing your way through the clouds, swooping down on Tamara's class castle. Lermontov paraphrased by Le Loudon. The last time I enjoyed you, said Demon, was in April when you wore a raincoat with a white and black scarf and simply reeked of some arsenic stuff after seeing your dentist. Dr. Perlman has married his receptionist, you'll be glad to know. Now to business, my darling, I accept your dress, the sleeveless black sheath. I tolerate your romantic hairdo. I don't care much for your pumps, nabosu nogu, on bare feet. Your bow mask perfume, pass on for, but my precious, I abhor and reject your livid lipstick. It may be the fashion in good old Lador. It is not done in Man or London. Ladno, okay, said Ardor, and baring her big teeth, rubbed fiercely her lips with a tiny handkerchief produced from her bosom. That's also provincial. You should carry a black silk purse. And now I'll show what a diviner I am. Your dream is to be a concert pianist. It is not, said Van indignantly. What perfect nonsense. She can't play a note. Well, no matter, said Demon. Observation is not always the mother of deduction. However, there's nothing improper about a hanky dumped on a Beckstein. You don't have my love to blush so warmly. Let me quote for comic relief. Lorsque son fiancé... Put parti pour la guerre, Irene de Grand Fife, la pauvre et noble enfant, ferme son pied à nous, vendit son éléphant. The gobble enfant is genuine, but the elephant is mine. You don't say so, laughed Ardor. Our great Capé, said Van, is awful, of course, yet he has one very fetching little piece which Ardor de Grandife here has twisted into English several times, more or less successfully. Oh, Van, interjected Ardor with unusual archness and scooped up a handful of salted almonds. Let's hear it, let's hear it, cried Demon as he borrowed a nut from her cupped hand. The neat interplay of harmonious motions, the candid gaiety of family reunions, the never-entangling marionette strings, all this is easier described than imagined. 
old storytelling devices, said Van, may be parodied only by very great and inhuman artists. But only close relatives can be forgiven for paraphrasing illustrious poems. Let me preface the effort of a cousin, anybody's cousin, by a snatch of Pushkin for the sake of rhyme. For the snake of rhyme, cried Ardor. A paraphrase, even my paraphrase, is like the corruption of snake root into snagrel, all that remains of a delicate little birth wart. Which is amply sufficient, said Demon, for my little needs and those of my little friends. So here it goes, continued Van, ignoring what he felt was an indecent allusion, since the unfortunate plant used to be considered by the ancient inhabitants of the Lador region. Not so much as a remedy for the bite of a reptile as the token of a very young woman's easy delivery, but no matter. By chance preserved has been the poem. In fact, I have it. Here it is. Le chute es lint, and one can know him. Oh, I know him, interrupted Demon. Le chute es lent en put les souve, du regard en reconnaissant, le chien a sa foule de curve, le rabo a sa foule de sang. Grand stuff. Yes, that was Capé, and now comes the cousin, said Van, and he recited. Their fall is gentle, the leaves dropper can follow each of them and know the oak tree by its leaf of copper, the maple by its blood red glow. Pa, uttered the versionist. Not at all, cried Demon. That leaves dropper is a splendid trouvail, girl. He pulled the girl to him, she landing on the arm of his club cecil. And he glued himself with thick, moist lips to her hot red ear through the rich black strands. Van felt a shiver of delight. It was now Marina's turn to make her entree, which she did in excellent chiaroscuro circumstances, wearing a spangled dress, her face in the soft focus sought by ripe stars, holding out both arms and followed by Jones, who carried two flambeaux and kept trying to keep within the limits of decorum, the odd little go-away kicks he was aiming backwards at a brown flurry in the shadows. Marina, cried Demon with perfunctory enthusiasm and patted her hand as he joined her on a settee. Puffing rhythmically, Jones set one of his beautiful dragon-entwined flambeau on the low boy with the gleaming drinks and was about to bring over its fellow to the spot where Demon and Marina were winding up affable preliminaries, but was quickly motioned by Marina to a pedestal near the striped fish. Puffing, he drew the curtains for nothing but picturesque ruins remained of the day. Jones was new, very efficient, solemn, and slow, and one had to get used gradually to his ways and wheeze. Years later, he rendered me a service that I will never forget. She's a jeune fille fatale. A pale, heartbreaking beauty, Demon confided to his former mistress without bothering to discover. Whether the subject of his praise could hear him, she did. From the other end of the room where she was helping Van to corner the dog and showing much too much leg in the process. Our old friend, being quite as excited as the rest of the reunited family, had scampered in after Marina with an old miniver furred slipper in his merry mouth. The slipper belonged to Blanche, who had been told to whisk Dak to her room, but as usual had not incarcerated him properly. Both children experienced a chill of deja vu, a twofold deja vu, in fact. 
when contemplated in artistic retrospect. Jolsta has gluposte. Please, no silly things, especially Devant's legends, said deeply flattered Marina, sounding the final S as her grand dams had done. And when the slow fish mouthed footman had gone carrying away Sapine, high chested Dak, and his poor plaything, she continued. Really, in comparison to the local girls, to Grace Erminen, for example, or Cordula de Pre, Ardor is a Turgenevian maiden or even a Jane Austen miss. I'm Fanny Price, actually, commented Ardor, in the staircase scene, added Van. Let's not bother about their private jokes, said Marina to Demon. I never can understand their games and little secrets. Mademoiselle Le Rivier, however, has written a wonderful screenplay about mysterious children doing strange things in old parks. But don't let her start talking of her literary successes tonight. That would be fatal. I hope your husband won't be too late, said Demon. He is not at his best after 8 p.m. summertime, you know. By the way, how's Lucette? At this moment, both battens of the door were flung open by Butelin in the grand manner, and Demon offered Kalachikum in the form of a Russian crescent loaf, his arm to Marina. Van, who in his father's presence was prone to lapse into a rather dismal sort of playfulness, proposed taking Ardor in, but she slapped his wrist away with a sisterly sangine of which Fanny Price might not have approved. Another price, a typical, too typical old retainer whom Marina and G.A. Vronsky during their brief, brief romance had dubbed for unknown reasons Grib, placed an onyx ashtray at the head of the table for Demon, who liked to smoke between courses, a puff of Russian ancestry. A side table supported also in the Russian fashion, a collection of red, black, gray, beige hors d'oeuvres with a serviette caviar, salfetochnia ikra, separated from the pot of gray bead, Ikra Svezjaya, by the succulent pomp of preserved bolets, white and sebeciline, while the pink of smoked salmon vied with the incarnadine of Westphalian ham. The variously flavored vodotchki glittered on a separate tray. The French cuisine had contributed its chaudfroys and foie gras. A window was open and the crickets were stridulating at an ominous speed in the black, motionless foliage. 